PNR Networks is a member of Patreon. Show your love for our shows by joining our ongoing fundraising campaign and get some fantastic perks in return. Check it out and become a Patreon sponsor. You can sign up at patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com, backslash PNR Networks. And thanks for your support. This podcast is a member of the Blueberry Network. Blueberry. No E's. That's Blueberry, B-L-U-B-R-R-Y. Dot com. Blueberry dot com. This podcast is a proud member of the Lamb Podcasting Network. Find the network at largeassmovieblogs.com. It's Kim versus TC in the Battle of the Lists. My list is better. My list is better. My list is better. No, it's not. My list is better. Kim or TC, who has the better list? From Subject Cinema, this is Front Row 5 and 10 with Kim Brown and T.C. Kirkham. Hi folks, welcome to another week here on Front Row 5 and 10 brought to you by the good people that bring you Subject Cinema. That would be me and him, the me being Kim Brown. What makes you think that we're good people? Are we good people? No. To him being me, TC Kirkham. Welcome. We're trying to give. We're trying to pour. I know. We're trying to put forth that wholesome family entertainment vibe. I know. Um. So welcome. In other words, fake it till you make it. Mm. Yeah. Welcome to another week on Front Row Five and Ten. Our yep. entertainment list show can be about anything and everything. Mm-hmm. We'd love it if you would send us your lists for the topics we do at front row at pnrnetworks.com or subject cinema at pnrnetworks.com. Yep. And we would also love it if you'd try to give us some ideas. If we use it, you'll get a prize, a mention, and a note on the website and a lot of everything else going on. Yep. This has been a fun one. Yeah. It has really been a fun one. Well, this is one of yours, this, so you should explain it. This one it. has been a pain. <clears throat> because there's just so many. Our top ten all-time favorite television themes. I still think we did this at some point, or some variation of it. So I'm sorry if we're repeating, but you know, I I did look through back all the episodes of Front Row 5 and 10, and I couldn't find it. So. Yeah, so... Anyway. Um, these can be anything, but it had to be a regular series. Mm-hmm. Yes. So... I have a whole list of honorable mentions. You want me to do it before you get started? Sure, why not? All right. So I had, when I started this list, about 170 titles from well-known stuff and really obscure stuff. Because somebody <clears throat> has to be an overachiever. Well, I can't help it. I love, I love TV themes. I, I know collect you do. TV themes. Yes, it's you like, do. Music is his thing. Yeah. And, and so many, now we've found these channels that run all these old credits, and I'm remembering all these old shows that had great themes that didn't last very long. Yep. I'm like, oh, that's what put this in my head in the first place. So, I decided to go, although there are a few iconic ones in my list, I did decide to go mostly obscure because they're favorites from the time I was watching them. Okay. So, you won't hear these on the on the top, but these were the top honorable mentions. Okay. The Monkees, Mary Tyler Moore Show, Guys Next Door from 1990, not the porn movies, um, Rubik the Amazing Cube, just because it was so out there. Uh, Super Friends, The Brady Bunch, The Partridge Family, The Bugs Bunny Roadrunner Show, Jeopardy, The Greatest American Hero, Star Trek, Mission Impossible, Hawaii Five O, and Doctor Who. Okay. Several of those were in the top ten. And I'm like, wait a minute. I want to go more obscure. I want to put on some of my really favorite stuff that nobody's ever heard of. Okay. So, all right. So all right. those are my. Do you have any? Uh, I have a special mention. Okay. It's not a runner-up because it doesn't count. It's and it doesn't count as a theme song. Oh, okay. Um. Although it does play at the beginning of the episode. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my special mention goes to Carry On Wayward Son by Kansas, which is what plays over The Road So Far, which is the how we got to this point 
at the end of each season of Supernatural. There's a shocker. And it's, well, it's an awesome song anyway. It is, and yeah. now Kansas Classic, has. Iconic. And now Kansas has a whole bunch of new fans. They have to be going, why are there all these you know, like, and, and 40, women at these concerts now? 41 years old. Okay, that hurt. Um, <laughs> there was no call for that. Um, Actually, 42, because it came out in late 76. Anyway. Okay, so that's my special mention, okay. because it's an awesome song. Because it's supernatural. And because it's supernatural, women need don't judge. Um, okay, so am I starting? Yeah. Or, okay. Uh, my first uh, favorite song is... Actually, uh, not from this country. There's a few of them that... Yeah, they're um, not from, from America. Yeah. My number 10 is the theme from Keeping Up Appearances. I, I almost, just I almost really, I considered that one, yeah. I love this theme. It's just got that so kind of bright, cheery, everything's okay, everything's fine, we're all perfect and everything's great and don't mind the, the trash fire going on right behind us. That kind of typifies keeping up appearances to me a Britcom that we fell in love with while we were in Britain yeah we saw it when it was in its first run when we were there in 94, 94. Yeah. yeah and we were like when is this show coming to America and when it and did a year we... later we, we were getting it and falling in love with it again yeah I just love the theme because it's just so bright and just has that very polished very highest sense yes it's very highest sense <laughs> the second you hear it you know what it is so my number 10 is the theme from keeping up appearances okay my number 10 is from a show that nobody's heard of I'm sure um well <laughs> they might challenge. the show had a lot of good people in it but it didn't do that well. It la- it limped through a few, uh, about ah, through two thirds of a season, back in when it premiered, um, and it was kind of ahead of its time because um, it was uh, the story of a former student at a high school who returned as a teacher to teach a revolutionary new video news program. By that point, they were were past. Uh, School newspapers. We were doing school newscasts. The show was called TV 101. It aired in 1988 and 89. Had a great cast, headed up by Sam Robards as the teacher, plus Andrew White, who was best known at the time for American Anthem. Um, later, Matthew, Le- Matthew LeBlanc, who went on to become Matt LeBlanc on Friends and all mm-hmm. those things. Andrew Cassis, best known for Revenge of the Nerds. Terry Polo. Um, any best number known of, for any, ABC. Uh, Stacey Dash. Alex Dessert, a whole bunch of good people were in this show. Yep. And and it was a great little show. I had been a huge fan of Andrew since American Anthem, and so I followed that. He's still, uh, he heads Looking Glass uh, Theater Company in Chicago these days and mm-hmm. writes all kinds of stuff. And I, I just love this show and the love of the characterizations. It was a continuing drama aimed at teens and tweens. And uh, I loved it. I thought it was great. It had a great heavy metal kind of based theme. I'll try to find it for a, for a, a YouTube thing. It was it was great. Number number ten, TV one hundred and one from nineteen eighty eight. Okay, my number nine is a theme that harkens back to my childhood. Although when I watched it, it was in reruns. But if I hear this theme, it doesn't matter what kind of a day I've had. It always makes me smile because it makes me remember a more innocent time, and it also reminds me of why I loved this genre, and more specifically, this character. Uh, My number nine is the theme for The Adventures of Superman. Now, I realize some people are going to be like, you know, oh... Not where I thought you were going with that. Okay. You know, some people are going to be like, oh, you know, you like that whole goody-goody, big blue boy scout version of Superman. Yeah, I do. I like the Superman who believed in the goodness of mankind and believed that he was put here to help people and that people were genuinely at their heart. Most people were really good. And it was just this very uplifting theme. It just had a feel of it, of the fact that this was who Superman was, an essentially good being that had come to Earth and wanted to help people. It just had this really powerful, strong feel to it. And when I when I hear it, that's the Superman I remember, you know, the whole George Reeves superhero stance kind of thing and the whole truth, justice in the American way thing. And I know some people will be like, that's cliche, that's old hat, whatever. I don't care. It means something to me. So my number nine is the theme to the adventures of Superman. That's an interesting choice. 
I would have never thought you would there. Uh, my number nine, um, great song all the way around, great show all the way around. Um, my first non-American uh, entry onto the, onto the chart. Mm-hmm. But it played here for a number of years and has never stopped running. When it was in its first run, it was on... Um, it came into the show during the third person's regular second season and then stuck with it for the next person's first season along with the original star from the original all the seasons anybody going to remember this because there's going to be a test so write all this down well it's one of those shows that my mother watched and i i fell in love with and loved the music from the time i was a child and it didn't happen didn't hurt that i was three or four years old and watching this and thinking wow i like her she's fun about both Diana Rigg and Linda Thorson. My number, my number nine is The Avengers uh, from the original theme song from, I believe that particular theme song ran starting with the Honor Blackman version through the end of the series. Mm-hmm. Does not encompass the new Avengers, which had its own theme song. Yeah. Or... Well, the first one where John Steed was paired up with the with doctor. The, yes, exactly. That, like, his name is completely uh, slipped my mind. It is. It is a. I saw this the first time when they were on A and E back in the early nineties, mm-hmm. and that was fun. They cut them to shreds, mm-hmm. but it was it was fun watching them. And the song was always great. Great remake done for the nineteen ninety nine movie or ninety eight movie uh, by um, Maurice Devere's, I think his name was. Um, and it, it's just a terrific song. Number nine, my all-time favorite TV themes, The Avengers. Okay. Um, this is fair warning. You're oh, going wow. to hate my number eight choice. Oh, wow. Well. And I know you are. You're going to hate my number eight choice, um, too. And I'm going to be perfectly honest. I don't know how close my number eight choice is to the original series. I've never actually heard anything from the original series. So there's that. My number eight is the theme to Sailor Moon. You're talking the American. Yeah. Thing. Okay. I'm sorry. I just liked this song. I liked the whole fighting evil by moonlight, winning love by daylight. I just liked that. I just I liked I was the like, Pokemon oh, theme gosh, too, but I, loved I didn't it. put them on my list. I just thought it, it just sounded so cool. And I am a Sailor Moon fan. Shoot me. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just I liked this show. I fell into it one day. Stop it. <laughs> I just fell into it one day, and I was like, what the heck is... Okay, this yep, is interesting. Yeah, she tripped and went, fell. Ow! Hey, what's this? Well, that would make me about the same as Serena, and we're probably both the same clumsy-wise, although you'd never get me in a Sailor Fuku. Um, it's just, I like the theme to this show. I don't know why. I don't care. It just makes me happy. It's just one of those themes that I just dig. I can't help it. My number eight, Sailor Moon. Right. <laughs> My number eight um, is... One of those few, a lot of times when you have theme songs, they get, and they're, and they're vocal theme songs, mm-hmm. they talk about the, the show. The show. They yeah, introduce the, the whole characters. Ridiculous the, Adams Family theme, you yeah. know, the, the ridiculous Patty Duke, you know, identical cousins thing, Partridge Family. Gilligan's mm-hmm. Island. Gilligan's Island. This falls along those lines, uh-huh. and it's it, it's um, it's one of those songs that if you'd never s- seen the show before, it sets up the premise instantly um the show is extremely hard to find i mean it is on amazon if you want to actually i don't know if you can order it it was there last time i looked but it it's um it's one of those shows that i caught because i liked one of the actors in it and decided to watch it and i was like ooh, Mm -hmm. i stuck with it all four of its seasons um, even though at the time it was considered a kid's show and I was in my 20s. <laughs> okay. From our beloved neighbors up north, my number eight theme from the Edison Twins. Uh, the show was uh, a, a science mystery adventure show starring Andrew Sabiston as Tom Edison and Marnie McPhail as his twin sister, Annie, uh, solving crimes using scientific methods. Science. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it was fun. So it was like the Bobsy Twins meets Mythbusters? Yeah, I, I was a big fan of Andrew, who had appeared in a show called When We First Met for HBO the year before. And when I saw he was on there, I went over there and, and watched it, and I've been a big fan of his for years, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I still remain a fan. I wa- seek him out when he's on TV. He does mostly stage work these days, but it's like um, he is 
the show was goofy. Um, and they, of course, they had their annoying little brother, Paul, played by Sonny Best and Thrasher, who's now a, a, a DJ. Um, and, um, that was the show where Corey, uh, Corey Haim had his, uh, acting debut. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, one of the a- actors who played Tom's friend, uh, his name is Milan Chelov, has become a, Top television director in Canada. Mm-hmm. Um, it had a, it was a it was a goofy little show. Had a lot of big name guest stars on it every week because it was air- aired on Canada's Saturday morning schedule. So, what was it about the theme that you liked? I just kind of like it because it's old fashioned and bouncy, mm-hmm. and and a very eighties. Right. Okay. Number eight theme from the Edison Twins. Okay, that's that's cool. Number seven on my list. To be perfectly honest, I didn't really watch a lot of episodes of this <clears> show. <throat> What I've seen of this show, it was in repeats, but that one time, the first time you ever hear that, that theme, you instantly, everybody knows what the show is. Also because they've made it into a series of popular films. You know, the whole dun 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 My number seven is the theme to Mission Impossible. Mm-hmm. That whole song, it's reference. just, huh? On my honorable mentions yeah. list there. That, there's so much tension in that song, the way, the way that they've, they've set it up, that it just, it really just, it gets you on edge and it gets you keyed up even before the episode starts. And they've obviously brought it into the, the, the film series starring Tom Cruise. You know, it's got more of a larger, grander sound behind it because they've got a larger orchestra. But it's still there. It's still got that same driving, nerve-wracking, tension-upping sound to it. And it's just very, very cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, my number seven, the theme to Mission Impossible. Moby's cover of that for the first Mission Impossible movie was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, my number seven is from a sitcom... Uh, that was a modest hit for a couple years on ABC. Didn't do all that well. It did well enough that it earned a, a, a daytime shot lot, slot for a while in repeats. But I always loved the song and I loved the singer and, and uh, it became my favorite song by her. Number seven, the theme from the TV series Angie, which ran 1979 to 1980, mm-hmm. starring Donna Pascal and Robert Hayes. The song is Different Worlds by Maureen McGovern. Became a top 20 hit on the pop chart and it was a... A great little song. I just, I love it was Marie a, McGovern it was a sweet anyway. Little song, yeah. yeah. Marie McGovern was just, uh, became a big star thanks to The Morning After from the Poseidon Adventure. Mm-hmm. And then didn't hit the chart again in a major way until Different World. She hit the AC chart several times with music from The Towering Inferno, Cinderella Liberty, and, uh, Superman. Can You Read My Mind was mm-hmm. originally by her. And, and it was, um, this was nice to see her come back to the pop charts. She made the rounds that year on all the on all the you know bandstand and all those, and it was a lot of fun. The song is just very up and very talking about how you can make something work even though you're from different, different worlds, worlds. Yeah, which is like us. Yeah, it is really. really. That's cool. I always thought it was a great song. Number yeah. seven, the theme from Angie, "Different Worlds" by Marie McGovern. Number six on my list is a song that I just absolutely love. I know you can't stand. I know you can't stand the show. I don't care. My number six is the theme to Spider-Man. I knew that was I funny. loved this song. Spider-Pig, I- Spider-Pig. Da, 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 da. Oh, sorry. Anyway. <laughs> Wait a minute. I loved this song. I thought it just, it was so 1960s and just sounded so awesome and fit the show perfectly. I also love the cover that the Ramones did for, uh, what was the name of that? Was that Saturday Morning TV? Was that the name of the, the Saturday Morning Cartoons. Saturday Morning Cartoons. Love the cover by the Ramones. They've actually used it in some of the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies in background stuff where you're like, I see what you did there. I just liked this song. I just thought it had a great beat. I I just loved it. I was just perfect for the way that series was set up. And I liked that show. I know you didn't like it. I, I thought it was great. My number six, Spider-Man. Well, I'll tell you why I didn't like the show. Spider-Man himself did not sound like a teenager. He had a very deep voice. Oh, blah, blah, blah. You know. Yeah. And the song's lyrics are inane. I mean, they really are. They're up there with Summer Girls and, and Lie to Me. Um, ugh. Inane? Inane. Inane. Yeah. Those lyrics are inane. Yeah. You, Mr. Number One Hanson fan, wants to start talking about inane lyrics? Don't do that. 
Why? Umbot makes perfect sense. If you listen to the lyrics of the song, the chorus is supposed to the be The chorus... If you listen to the lyrics, the lyrics make sense. The right. lyrics are actually quite deep. But there's a difference between what you're supposed to be saying and nonsense stuff, which is what that is. I mean, really. I think. Mm-hmm. Well, it's whatever. <laughs> no, I'm just... Whatever. I'm, te- I'm um, teasing. Number I'm six teasing. on my list. Um, Everybody probably knew it would be here. It's just a, a great song. Possibly the spookiest theme of its type for its kind of show. Um, I think it went Doctor Who one better, and ironically, they had the same composer. Uh, number six, theme from The Tomorrow People, ran from 1973 to 1979, written by Dudley Simpson. Mm-hmm. And um, great song. It, you have to admit, that minor key gives it a kind of spooky oh, definitely. feel. Oh, yeah. It's got, um, it's got a real otherworldly sound to it that's perfect they've no. they've never revived it in any of the revivals no uh the, which, the nickelodeon which is another one mistake. used two different themes and then the the cw one the less said the better um it was um it was great and it gave you it gave us the whole expression under the lava lamp when i was part of the fandom where because they had this little snow globe thing with lava lamp siphon at the mm-hmm. end credits um the show is highly underrated and highly underwatched and people who have seen it here usually became pretty big fans. If there's anything good that the CW show did, it was leading people back to the original show. Yeah. Which has now started to find a following online 30 or 40 plus years since it's premiered. Okay. My number six, Dudley Simpson's The Tomorrow People. I'm not surprised it's there. I'm surprised it's not in your top five, but I am not. I'm definitely not surprised it's there. It just got knocked out of the top five. Uh, my number five is a song that, uh, this this is another thing from my childhood. The second you play this song, I, I instantly smile because it reminds me of my childhood. And the one of the happier things about it. And they actually wound up using a somewhat different version in the big screen version of the film, which I was really excited about. Uh, my number five is the theme to Speed Racer. I love, <laughs> and there's the look. I saw that coming a mile off. I loved this show when I was a kid. This I, is my- <laughs> I could never stand the show. I love the movie. I can't stand the show. I loved the, the theme. The music's okay. I, you know, I like I, the remake they did for the movie. Really I did good. too. I actually really liked that quite a lot. It's. I just loved the theme. I thought it just had this perfect... Um, mixture of, you know, excitement and talking about, you know, Speed being a daring race driver and the Mach 5, the coolest car in the world, next to the Batmobile. Um, but, and Baby. But it comes in third. But I... <laughs> baby but, is a car. And? The Mach 5, Mach 4? Mach 5. Is has all these gadgets and stuff in it. So baby comes third. Says you. No, I, um, think, that, I think anybody would rate uh, it that anyway, way. Anyway, I think... And it actually is fourth behind Kit. It. Anyway, I loved Speed Racer. I loved the theme. If you played it for me now, I'd burst into a big smile. I just loved the sound of... It sounded exciting. It sounded like... A racetrack, you know, where there's all these things going on and all this activity and stuff like that. And I just liked it. I just... It's I, loungy. It doesn't sound anything like a racetrack. Uh, here he comes. Here comes Speed Racer. That, you can't get any loungier than that. I'm sorry. Hmm. <laughs> uh, my number my number five, Speed Racer. Just piss all over my memory. Well, no, no, no. I like I, it. I mean, I, it's not a terrible song. No. Uh, this show is terrible, but the, the, the <sighs> song is not terrible. Um, my number uh, five is another iconic British show that we have always been big fans of. And you always look forward to hearing that iconic opening because you know it means that for the next 30 minutes, you're probably going to be laying on the floor laughing yourself sick. Mm-hmm. Right next to your pussy. No. Oh. No. Has nothing to do with are you being Oh, served. okay. I'm sorry. Has okay. to do with a certain secret agent with one eye and his oh. hamster assistant. My number five is the theme from Danger Mouse. Uh, I love this, you know, that dun 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 dun
30 minutes. Mm-hmm. You agree. I do. Oh, the new definitely. series is, is, is okay. It's funny. But the, the old series is classic. They're both on Netflix. If you haven't seen them, watch them. And it's like they actually didn't ruin the new series, as so many cartoon networks have done with the revivals they've been doing. Looking at like you, Cartoon Power, Network. Uh, mm-hmm. Power, I just said that. Yeah. Powerpuff Girls. And now they're getting flack for their Thundercats revival. Uh. But Danger Mouse's revival was actually pretty good. But I have to say... The theme song always makes me know that I'm going to be enjoying it because the lyrics are just like so self smarmy, you know. <laughs> and I mean, they're fine. And of course, they have a funny take on the end on, on the theme at the end in some of the episodes too. Mm-hmm. So it's worth taking a check checking it out. My number five, the theme from Danger Mouse. Okay, Awak. The whole thing. <laughs> The whole thing that you mentioned before about how some themed songs tell you about like the characters uh-huh. or the plot or something like that, that definitely fits in with my number four. Although they've had to change the lyrics every couple of seasons or so because they change a main character, they change something about the plot, but it always ends up being the same thing mm-hmm. about a guy... Trapped in space with a bunch of robots oh, yeah. riffing on terrible movies. Mm-hmm. So we don't have to. My number four is the theme to Mystery Science Theater 3000. If we don't have to, why do we watch them? Because we're masochists! <laughs> Yay! Uh, it, I love the theme to this show because it tells you everything about the show. Whether we're talking about Joel or Mike or Jonah... Or whether that's the new guy if yeah, you haven't seen him. Yeah. Love Jonah. Jonah's awesome. You know, or whether they're being menaced by um, Professor Forrest, Doctor Forrester, his mother Pearl Forrester, or Doctor Forrester's daughter Kinga Forrester, and I don't even want to know how that happened. That is something I don't want to think about. I, I don't want to think about the son of TV's Frank. <laughs> that's terrifying. Oh, doesn't that talking make, about you, Pat Oswald? Doesn't that make you want to crawl in a liquor it's, cabinet and never come out? I, I love the theme, and I love the whole robot roll call. I love everything about this show. This theme never fails to make me smile and make me happy. So my number four, the theme to Mystery Science Theater 3000. My number four is also a, a theme that was heard as sometimes as often as three times a week at its time, at its peak. And yet it's the theme for several different television shows. Um, the reason that is, it has its own... Each show then sometimes had its own theme. Not always, but sometimes. And I'm not trying to be rude, but you're confusing the hell out of me. Oh, well. Uh. <laughs> I, re- I mean, no, I realize that's not a hard thing to do, but, you know. Um, it, it, it was the theme from an Umbrella show that had a number of different elements in it. Uh-huh. Two of them, actually, at, at its peak, because it ran twice a week with different people, different elements in it. Uh, my number f- uh, number four is the NBC mystery movie. Uh, oh. The very synthesizer-oriented song. Okay. Um, in, on Sundays, it would mm-hmm. introduce uh, Macmillan and Wife, McLeod, Columbo, and whichever hapless person they had that year, like Heck Ramsey or McCoy or Amy Amy Prentice was one year. Part of that? Ban- no, no, that's coming up. Oh. And then Quincy, who was the only character that got spun off into his own hour-long show, oh. Lanigan's Rabbi. On Wednesdays, Banachek. Uh, Madigan, oh no, Madigan wasn't part of that. Banachak, Cool Million, and the Snoop Sisters for a couple of years, and they always started with the same thing. I was disappointed that they didn't revive it when they when they brought revived the mystery movie on ABC in the in the nineties with new episodes of Columbo, uh, new episodes of a few other shows, and and I you thought know, it Columbo would be the new the new Columbo one was the only one that stuck. Didn't yeah, it, it was. Um, I just thought I was you know as a very cool synthesizer. I love good synthesizer music, and that one always touches me. When I hear that song, I know what's coming on. Because mm-hmm. it's always been one of my favorites. My number four, the NBC Sunday and Wednesday mystery movie. Okay. My number three on my list, some people might have a problem with. Um, I put it on my list, though, because A, it's important to me. Um, and B, because I felt like when it actually, this is kind of a weird way to do it, this actually went from the big screen to the small screen. I like the small screen version better than the big screen one, to be honest. My number three is the theme to Batman the Animated Series. 
I absolutely loved. It wasn't quite the same. It, it wasn't was, quite. It Elfman was wrote enough. both of them. Yeah. It was. It was. An, it wasn't quite the same music. It was different it's a great enough. Theme music. You know, that w- when you hear that music, because if you played me a tiny bit of that music, I could probably tell you where in the opening theme, you know, what's going on on mm-hmm. screen. And then you have that whole scene at the end where it's finally that, you know, dun, 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 dun. And you've got the, you've got the lightning strike in the background and Batman standing there on one of the rooftops of Gotham City. And holy crap, is that scene hot? Um, <laughs> yes, I just called a car, a cartoon character hot. I like to experiment. Live with it. Um, my, <laughs> my number... Well, Batman is a sexual character. Ew. I don't care. Um, my number three, Batman, the animated series. Absolutely fantastic. My, totally my, love it. My number three is the highest song that nobody's going to know. The show lasted four weeks Okay. in the fall of 1989, I think it was. And it was like... I was a big fan of the actress, so I was ready to see it. And I loved... The theme song. Mm-hmm. It would introduce us to another actress who would be a bigger, bigger star one day. Okay. The show was called Legwork. Uh, I don't remember this. I don't know if you remember or not. The only reason I know about this show is because of you. Yeah. That's it. Legwork <laughs> starred Margaret Cohen, from, who had previously been on As the World Turns, as a uh, pr- female private detective in New York City, aided by her best friend, played by now Oscar winner, Frances McDormand. And... Uh, they were taking on all these cases uh, in New York. She had. Uh, it was a short-lived show. A, a CBS ran it on Saturday nights, I think, which was kind of a dead zone for stuff like that. But it has this real cool keyboard riff as its theme, mm-hmm. and I love great keyboards. It was sounding like something that I would have heard out of um, Richard Carpenter, maybe, or Elton John doing mm-hmm. just keyboard work. Um, terrific stuff. The, the the credits went by with a great pace and set the pace for the song and for the show. And the, and the music was just terrific. I'm surprised, as CBS has been known to use stuff that they've used before in other shows, mm-hmm. um, I'm surprised they didn't try to, to reuse this somewhere because it was such mm-hmm. a great little song. Um, Seek Out Legwork's opening credits on YouTube. They're there, and it's a great song, and I hope you like it. From number my number three from the short-lived series Legwork. Okay, uh, the number two most my most favorite uh, TV theme song you've already mentioned. Um, my number two is the theme to the Tomorrow People, the original 1970s version. It was the first time I ever heard it. I was I was really like, wow, this is so different. It had mm-hmm. just this really different, eclectic, quirky, never heard anything before like it vibe. And it made me want to watch the show. You know, it just had this really... And the thing I really liked about it was the fact that it has this underlying um, river of strength to it. There's kind of an uncertainty about the um, the uh, the upper parts of the the theme. There's this uncertainty which you also feel in the characters. They're dealing with an uncertain situation. They're the next step in human evolution, and there's very few of them. They're teenagers or younger, and they know that if the regular world, whatever that is, uh, finds out about them, they're as good as dead. Yep. But there's also this undercurrent... See the, see the aforementioned CW remake. There's also this <laughs> undercurrent of strength. These are kids, but they all have each other to lean on. Mm-hmm. And I think that comes through in the theme. Mm-hmm. And I think it's powerful. I think it's beautiful. I And I just love it. I'd, I'd listen to it right now if I could, you know, because it's that good just talking about it. So my number two most favorite theme song, the theme to the Tomorrow People. Thank you to Dudley Simpson yeah, for writing stuff. such an awesome piece. Uh, my top two are both iconic, so if you didn't okay, well, know these. My number one is, so, you know. Yeah. Um, my number two, I always loved this, and I was always disappointed that it wasn't a bigger hit on the radio as big as some of the other songs that had come out around the same time. Mm-hmm. In the 19, late, mid to... In the middle of the 1970s... I told you not to drink before the show. In the middle of the 1970s, TV themes started to catch on as hit records. Right. It started in 1975 with the theme from the Rockford Files, then spread to SWAT, Welcome Back Cotter, uh, which hit number one, by the way, by John Sebastian, mm-hmm. Happy Days, 
and this show. I loved this theme. I always thought it was great. I still think it's great. Of all the theme songs of its type out there, I would love to hear this the most because it's so up and friendly and happy. You cannot help but like it. My number two theme song of all time is the theme from Laverne and Shirley, Making Our Dreams Come True by Cindy Greco. Loved this song from the very beginning. I take it you don't agree? No, I'm... um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to look that gobsmacked, but um, yeah. I'm just I mean, kind this of... is a great, a positive song. It's about going out there and making your dreams come true. Fine. Doing everything you can to, to make sure things happen. Right, I get it. No, that's fine. It is. It's a very nice, up, perky song. Mm-hmm. I'm Too sorry. Too up and perky for her. That's not what I meant. <laughs> that's not what I meant. It's just... That's the vibe that you're giving me, though. Oh. Okay. Okay. Well, um, it's just, it's a great song. No, it is. I, I was always disappointed that it peaked at number 18 on the chart, I think, or somewhere around there, whereas Happy Days and all those got up to the upper reaches When you of the say chart. Happy Days, do you mean the actual theme or the when they use theme Rock from Happy Days the by, by Pratt and McLean. Oh, the okay. The Happy Days, Happy Days theme, not oh. Rock Around the Clock, which okay. is only used for the first two seasons. Right. So, well, that's why I was asking. Yeah, so. Okay. But that well, also that's... recharted when it was on. No, that's uh, fine. There's just some, you know. Great theme songs out there, and along with Mary Tyler Moore and a few others, that's always one that sticks out for me. I have to be honest, there's musically. one theme that hasn't shown up yet on your list and wasn't on your runners-up list unless I missed hearing it, mm. that I'm really surprised isn't there. I'll have to wait and see if it's, it's your number one. It's probably not then, because the number one's going to surprise you. Okay. I, it, was, it was probably, I remember I, I decided to go for more unknown stuff Mm -hmm. and left the iconic stuff that were really really hot ones right obviously star trek didn't make my list yeah so that's something and doctor who that's Mm -hmm. something yeah my number two theme from laverne and shirley making our dreams come true by cindy greco the number one song on my list of favorite tv theme songs like there was any other choice really my number one the theme to star trek there this was the song, this was the theme that opened up. I mean, it's really weird because I've mentioned, you know, often that Star Wars was my first foray into science fiction and it really opened up my head to the whole idea of science fiction and helped me to discover fantasy and horror and make me the well-adjusted individual I am today. But, um, stop rolling your eyes. What? But, um, <laughs> But Star Trek, the reason I say that about Star Wars is because Star Trek was always there. Yeah. That was always yeah, it was, it was part of my reruns, life. So. You know, and that's really weird when you think about it. I don't ever remember a time when Star Trek was not part of my life. Right. You could always turn on the TV and hear space, the final frontier. Yeah. And just that music and the whole... The, there's the theme song, which does have lyrics, but you don't hear them. And they're hard to find anyway, so. There's just, it, that music has so many things happening in it. It has scope. It has beauty. It has power. It has strength. And the most important thing that it has, it has optimism. Mm-hmm. I really feel like the theme to Star Trek has this overwhelming feeling of hope and optimism and positivity and the idea that by the time we have reached this point in the history of the galaxy that we've actually as a species grown the fork up Hmm. you know we haven't blown ourselves up we haven't made the world a desolate mess we've actually found other races out there and said hey let's all explore together and it'll be awesome and that's what I get out of the theme to Star Trek, mm-hmm. is the idea that we actually not only survived, we're thriving. And I think that's so important. So my number one most favorite TV theme song, the theme to the original Star Trek. Yeah, it's great. So what do you think is, what were your surprised that I wasn't on my I, list? What, what I was surprised is not on your list, the theme to Wonder Woman. No, actually, it, it was on the. Th- it was in there, but I hadn't. Really and also the theme to Dallas. Yeah, those were both on the on the thought list. Those two. Yeah, I love both of those two. Um, but when it comes to iconic themes and the songs that I could hear over and over and over again, mm-hmm. and the one that I could listen to over and over again, I'm going to surprise people because I went entirely in a different direction to daytime. Everything is out there, and when you have 
The, the sad thing is, if you play this song now to a generation of kids who don't really know the song because the show's only available in repeats, that you don't really know the song, they probably are still going to recognize it as having heard it somewhere, passing through a room or whatever, on repeat television, used occasionally in a commercial or an ad for a local channel or whatever. It's just so happy and bouncy and jaunty, and, and it makes everything fun. i got to be honest, I am blanking the heck out. Yes, you are. Number one, theme from the match game. <laughs> Thank you for that blank there. there. <laughs> that was not planned. I know it wasn't. That was wow. great too. <laughs> the theme from the match That's game awesome. seventy three to seventy nine. This oh show gosh. or eighty eighty one in syndication um, That's is a so great good. song. And you know you get that da 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 da. Kids now know it from the brand new version of the show with Alec Baldwin. They're using yeah. the original theme, so you can't get away from this song. It's a hella smuttier, but it's in the, the well. Ori- the show the, the is show yeah. Is, the that's song what I mean. is it? Yeah. Um, well, no, it's kind of hard to get smuttier than the original show in its own inimitable way. The uh-huh. best thing is. It's still on. Match mm-hmm. Game ended in 1982 uh, in first run in syndication, but the reruns first appeared on Game Show Network in the 90s and is now on like four times a day on Buzzer, the over-the-air uh, Game Show Network mm-hmm. run by I think it's Warner Brothers. One of the one of the net major studios runs the mm-hmm. runs this and it's all game show and you can still hear the original theme song every day and the shows are still freaking hilarious you can't you can sit down with your kids today and they're gonna tee hee 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 at the little double entendres that Gene Raber and Richard Dawson and all these stars made 40 45 years ago yeah but you do have to admit some of the jokes <laughs> now na- some of the jokes now are like uh, yeah. you know, it's like okay. we watched reruns religiously when they I were know. on every night at six thirty on Game Show Network during the early part of the two thousands. Yeah. We would sit there and watch them with dinner every night. We'd sit there and crack up and think all these people are idiots. You ca- how do you come up with that with this question? We you know? actually we actually wound up with a code in our house because of watching one contestant. One contestant <laughs> who came up with an answer that was so stupid that whenever anything happened after that where somebody said something truly asinine, <laughs> one of us would look at the other and go, "Brick." Brick. <laughs> and we would just be off. We've actually done that in public just to make the other one crack up yeah. because that's the point of inside jokes. And of course then- we have a whole new one with the car shot him. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> you, sorry. Sure. sorry, couldn't couldn't resist. <laughs> that happened on the local news actually, the day before the Vegas shootings, which was oh, uh, we, it's oh, been no, hard no, to no, use. No, it. no, 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 shush, 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 don't go there. Well, it was that, but the first time we I heard know, it. I know, I know. We both laughed ourselves sick for an hour after watching that poor news reporter who's no longer with the channel he was with up here. Yeah. Um, although, not because of that. But as we was, mentioned, that recently. was the night before. But yeah. Um, but Match Game is just iconic. You've got... It's a bubbly, fun song. When you hear it, if you... I guarantee you, if you went into a block party with everybody in the middle of the neighborhood and turned that thing on, not only would people recognize it, people would start dancing. Yeah. Or if you asked people, hey, do you know what this is the theme to? You don't even need to ask him. It's just the song itself is so infectious that they're going to enjoy it. Yeah, that's true. My number one favorite TV theme of all time, the theme from Match Game, Match Game 73 to 79 and 82 in okay. prime time. Uh, so counting up my list uh, from 10 to 1, my top favorite TV themes. Number 10, Keeping Up Appearances. Number 9, The Adventures of Superman. Number 8, Sailor Moon. Number 7, Mission Impossible. Number 6, Spider-Man. Number 5, Speed Racer. Number 4, Mystery Science Theater 3000. <coughs> number 3, Batman the Animated Series. Number 2, The Tomorrow People, the 1970s version. And number 1, favorite TV theme of all time, the theme to the original Star Trek. Track. Yours are all pretty good, except for Spider-Man. Well, I can even stand Speed Racer a little bit. My top ten. I'm so ten, glad you approve. Number ten, TV 101. Number nine, The Avengers, the 1960s series, not the cartoon. Number eight, The Edison Twins. Number seven, Angie. Number six, The Tomorrow People. Number five, Danger Mouse. Number four, The NBC Mystery Movie. Number three, Legwork. Number two, Laverne and Shirley. And number one, Match Game. Technically, Match Game 73 is mm-hmm. what it was really, because that's when it premiered. Mm-hmm. 
I thought those were pretty good. Yeah, I thought they came out awesome. And I mean, if you're, I know people are going to be screaming at you, where's the theme from MASH? Where's blah, 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 where's blah, blah, blah? Well, write me and tell me I'm wrong. Yeah. You know, front row at pnrnetworks.com. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't want, we want you to do that anyway. If you come up with your list, we'll read them on the show. Totally. Give me for this list or any other list we've done. And if you want to give us an idea for a list and we use it, we'll give you a prize. Front row at pnrnetworks.com. Mm-hmm. What are we doing next week? Uh oh, she's got this devious smile of hers on. I don't know what. Oh you're talking yes, about. you do. You're gonna. This is gonna be killing me, isn't no, it? No, I don't. Well, it, it might be. It might be tough because there's so many. Oh, like um, this one. Yeah, yeah, this was tough. Yeah. My list for next week. I challenge you um, to come up with your top ten favorite British TV shows, and that can be from. Any category you want. What if I don't have ten? <laughs> You're kidding me, right? Um, I don't know. I'll have to think about it for a minute. Well, okay. I can think of six off the top of my head. Okay, well, that's... and you liked a lot of Britcoms that I couldn't stand, so I mean, it's like, okay, yeah. we'll have to but wait that's, and see. But that's that's what it's going to be. Our top ten favorite British TV shows. Yeah, I can probably come up with ten. Shouldn't be too hard. Mm-hmm. If you'd like to continue to support PNR Networks and Front Row 5 and 10 and all our great shows, please become a Patreon supporter. Patreon is our main link to being able to do more for you. Now, as I said on Subject Cinema last week, we did get a little bit of money uh, from my mother's passing, and so I put most of it aside, but we did put a budget sum for some new equipment, which we've started to use and work in slowly here and there, mm-hmm. and it's it's been a great boon to us. The sound's quality. I keep getting, hearing from my local people that listen that it's a great sound. The sound quality is better, and everything yep. sounds great, and that's terrific. Um, but we definitely could use your help, and preferably before... All the crazy stuff that could wipe Patreon and everything else off the face of the earth, which is the upcoming EU copyright thing. So please, come on board at Patreon. Go to patreon.com backslash PNR Networks. And remember, by supporting us there, you are not only supporting Front Row 5 and 10, you are supporting all of the PNR Networks podcasts and websites. And that's hard work keeping all that stuff going. Mm -hmm. We could certainly use a little love from you guys. Yep. We also have a number of other shows out there. We do. Including Subject Cinema every Sunday evening at around 7, 7.30 mm-hmm. uh, with movie reviews and stuff. All month long this month, it will be our Boston Springs Festival review show and uh, great stuff there. And we also have our two mini series from that show, Front Row, uh, not Front Row, that's this show, Three Minute Weekend, which covers all the new film releases in theaters in the U.S. and Tuesday Digidex, all the current home video and mm-hmm. streaming releases in the U.S., Friday for Three Minute Weekend, Tuesday for Tuesday Digidex, yep. and those are every week. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also have shows that we do on our own. I have two shows right now. I have Platinum Roses Garden, which is my uh, Supernatural podcast. Obviously, Season 13 for Supernatural is in the rearview mirror, but you can go back and look at... Uh, but Season the, 14 is coming up. Yes, it is. It's not like the show ended or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Yet. Are you done? Yet. Anyway. <laughs> Don't make me come over there. Don't poke the bear. I know. Go I, ahead. <laughs> you know, me and my spirit animal would like to have a long discussion with you once this is done. Uh, anyway, it's but you can go back and listen to my show where I uh, talk about Supernatural's past seasons. And I have other previous seasons as well, if you'd like to go take a listen. She's been and, doing this show since season four, right? Yes. So yeah. you got a, there's a huge library of shows out there. Yeah. And I'm also doing uh, Ring Around the Rosie, which is my wrestling podcast. And that's a lot of fun. I hope you come and listen to that. I've been. Brand new credits and everything premiering this week. Mm-hmm. Or premiered um, this week, actually. I would, also, I would also like to bring up that neither show is safe for work because I swear like a sailor, sailor because yay, First Amendment. <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> That has nothing to do with it. It's just the fact that you got a potty mouth on you. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. True. But you know, um, I got I got to be me. As the yep. song says. My show Catastrophe Vortex will be back on July 12th with a brand new format, new look on the website, everything. Mm-hmm. Going to be doing some new stuff to make it a little bit easier for me to do the show, and I hope you'll be there. CatastropheVortex.com. Also, don't forget the Kirkham Report. I do have it. It is still coming. We are going to be doing some stuff on YouTube with the Kirkham Report and Front Row Five and Ten. Uh, and I hope you'll be watching for those as well as other original stuff on our YouTube site. Mm-hmm. So 
you can get, get to that by clicking on any YouTube link we have. Anthony Lamberti, in the meantime, is over there with Aunt B's Nerd Grotto on YouTube. And uh, although they're currently off right now evaluating what they're doing, K-Babble with Eric and Valerie Lyon is over 200 great shows yep. from the past. Fun as hell. And you go back all the way to when Eric and Amber, his daughter Amber, were doing the show about video games mostly. Mm-hmm. They are a riot. I mean, they really are. Go back and listen to those. They're a lot of fun. Kbabble.com. And don't forget... And don't forget about Manhattan Hammerdown as it happened, if you are a dra- of a dramatic frame of mind. Uh, this was a dramatic reading that we all did. Everybody involved in the I PNR networks. I not it a dramatic reading. It was a dramatic presentation. Okay. Because not all of it was reading. It was, some of it was like simulated news. And right. Some of it was okay. EAS stuff. Yep. And, it's, so it's it was done, reading, but, it was yeah. done in conjunction with the anniversary of the release of the, the 10 year release of the film Cloverfield. Yay! It's been, it's everybody involved in our little, our little, uh, podcast family took a part in it. And, and it's way better than the Cloverfield paradox. Was. From what we've heard (laughs) and it was a real labor of love and tc wrote the whole thing so manhattanhammerdown.com yeah Uh, and you can see the video on youtube if you are so inclined to follow us on twitter you may do so i'm platinum rose lady at twitter.com i'm tc i'm uh east cinema one east cinema boston tc over at twitter and Mm -hmm. don't forget to check out our facebook as well and uh, maybe a few other things, too, we're looking into for the near future. Yep. We have a lot of new projects that we're looking into. Uh, we do actually are starting to plan out a couple of new podcasts and a few new video ideas. Mm-hmm. And uh, we hope that you'll be there. And as I said, your Patreon support would be a big help in there. Yes. To do those. Um, so, oh, top fa- oh, favorite. But that's going to be difficult because I love a lot of British shows. I know. So it's going to be... I can think of, like like I said, six or so off the top of my head. You're going to have to pare stuff down. Yeah, well, yeah. not from six. I, well, I have to get more well, on Yeah, there. but you're gonna, I know you, and you're going to be like, okay, well, there's this and this and this, and before you turn around, you're going to have 50. And then you're going to have to pare them down. I don't even think I've seen 50 British shows in well, my life. Well, 20. All right. 20, possibly, yeah. All right, so in any case, we'll have that for you next week. Mm-hmm. And until then... This is Kim Brown. I'm T.C. Kirkham. And we hope we can count on you to come back next week and help us count up another list here on Front Row 5 and 10. Count on it. You've been listening to Front Row 5 and 10 with Kim Brown and T.C. Kirkham. Podcasting's choice from coast to coast, continent to continent, right here 24 7.